Approximately 100 children and adolescents were transferred to the beautiful castle of Amblois near the town of Vendôme. It was surrounded by an enormous park with forests and lakes. It was there I met the children of Buchenwald. I had just returned to France where I had been living before the war. My father did not return from Auschwitz and the rest of my family was dispersed. In Geneva I had heard about the existence of the children of Buchenwald and had decided to visit them. I sat on the lawn with them, watching their expressionless faces and apparently not noticing or ignoring my presence. They spoke in Yiddish about the camps, the evacuation from Auschwitz, the long march to Buchenwald and the last days of Barracks 66. The director of Amblois was upset about the boy's aggressiveness towards him. Like other directors of homes for survivors of Buchenwald, called B Homes, he believed that they were born psychopaths, cold and indifferent by nature, and that this was the reason they were able to survive the camps. Extract from the children of Buchenwald. This was Judith Hemmendinger. And this is the good, the bad, and the pure evil. Born Judith Feist on October 2nd, 1923 in Germany. Her father was a mining engineer named Philip and her mother was named Hannah. Judith was the great granddaughter of merchant and scholar Elazar Liebmann Philip Pines. Her family were Orthodox Jews and quite wealthy. At age five, the family moved to France for her father's work. As the only Jewish family in the area, the children, including Judith, went to public school where they spoke French and learned secular subjects. At home, they spoke German and learned Hebrew and the Bible. Later, the family would move again to Paris. World War II would happen and in the September 1939, the Feist family were on their summer holidays in the south of France. Her father Philip was arrested as an enemy. He was deported to a detention camp in Normandy. The family were assigned to a house in the area. Her father was released in June 1940 and the family then went to Ronan, which, was in the French, which is the French free zone but German officials advised Judith's father to come back to Paris. The family would stay in Ronan. Later, her father went to Nice in South France to open a school from a request by a rabbi. At a train station in Nice, Judith's father was arrested and confined to Gurs internment camp. After this, he was deported to the Darsney internment camp and then on to Auschwitz in September 1943. On the day he arrived at Auschwitz, Judith's father Philip Feist was killed. Summer of 1942, aged 19, Judith began working at a youth hostel for hidden children operated by OSE, which was a French Jewish children's aid organization based in Geneva, Switzerland. New Year's Day 1943, Judith travelled under the false name Jacqueline Fournier to Tail Learners and joined the Hakshara, which was a training program and agriculture centre in Europe. Here, Zionist youth and young adults learned vocational skills for emigrating to Israel. The one Judith went to was operated by the Ecolarises et Eclaireurs, Israelites de France, under the illusion of an agricultural school. Students totaled 22 young Jewish men and women, all who carried fake papers. While here, Judith had a relationship with student Claude Hemendinger. But September 1943, her mother needed Judith to go with her and her younger s siblings to try to get out of Switzerland. The family trekked long and far over the Alps with a guide, but after crossing the border, they were all arrested and detained in Geneva. 
They were released and sent to a refugee camp. Here, Judith worked as a teacher. She then applied for a six-month course offered by the OSE to train as a social worker to help with post-war situation, and she was accepted. Her job included interviewing child refugees, traveling under fake papers to find their real identities. Her aim was to find and reunite these children with their families after the war. May 1945, OSE sent out a call for volunteers to care for children survivors of the Buchenwald concentration camp. Judith would respond to this call. She went to Chateau de l'Alboil in France, where a home had been set up for about a hundred teen boys from orthodox homes who asked for kosher facilities and a higher level of religious observance than what was being provided to larger groups of the Buchenwald child survivors in France. At just 22, Judith took over as the director of the home. The previous director found it too hard to relate to the boys. Judith stayed with the home as it moved to Chateau de Vazilis in Taverny in October 1945 and remained as his director until September 1947, when the very last child found a permanent place. Among those in her care was Yisrael Mer Lull, who would become the chief rabbi of Israel from 1993 until 2003, and Eli Weisel, Nobel winner. Judith explained her approach as, quote, I love them, I never judged them. I became attached to them, and I felt that it was reciprocal." End quote. With the home closed, Judith headed to London to stay with her aunt and uncle. In London, a letter came from Claude Hemendinger, asking to meet and see each other again. They met in Paris and married in September 1948. They would settle in Israel for a while, but when Claude's father died, they returned to Claude's mother's home in Strasbourg, where they re remained for 20 years. Judith and Claude had three children together. In Strasbourg, Judith started going to a psychotherapist to talk and work through her wartime experiences. When the family returned to Israel in 1969, Judith did her formal education, earning her a bachelor's degree in Jerusalem. She went on to get a master's degree, and in 1981, at the University of Strasbourg, got her PhD. In the 80s, Judith wrote books and papers on the children who survived. She remained in contact with the Buchenwald children and their children for many, many years. In 1970, the children who survived invited her to a dinner commemorating the 25th anniversary of the liberation of Buchenwald. In 2003, Judith was awarded the French Legion of Honor, the highest French order of merit, both military and civil for her work to rehabilitate the children who survived Buchenwald. All records have, have her still alive at the grand age of 98. And that is the short story of Judith Hemendinger. Like and subscribe on my YouTube and podcasts and join me next time for the story of the Great Chinese Famine from 1959 until 1961. It is widely said to be the deadliest famine and one of the greatest man-made disasters in human history. Deaths from starvation range from 15 to 55 million. Until then, this was the good, the bad and the pure evil.